up here on the left, you can see Motor 4. Okay. We'll be dead ahead in a second. Okay. system going over to most of the clam tanks. And then we can also feed directly into the wet lab here for an area and such. And we also use the salt water for collecting the soil The uh, Jigus food stock we use is down on the reef about uh, two and a half miles. So you actually you tell me to ask for your fishing for them, do you? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. We'll see, uh, you know, we've learned from the biopsy work that's been done out here. This is not a good area for gigas in particular. Uh, the ones are the gigas about 15 uh, that are located. We know where they are, but that's, you know, in two years of looking for clams. We sort of brought them all into one area that's deep enough that uh, local fishermen don't really go after them. We've had only one clam uh, get taken in the last few years. Right, they do a biopsy on the in the field. When they yeah, when they're ready to bring it in. And how often do they have uh, eggs and eggs? Uh, it depends on the species. I was just asking Laurie about this. I, you know, I don't know what the problem is. She says that, for example, Jigas, virtually any month of the year you can find some that are ripe. But there's no definite season for them. Pretty much hit or miss, but they seem to be right just about any time of the year. Can I ask what I'm trying to ask? I'm just trying to ask. This side, you get some of the legs, you're like, would it be another year before getting the legs? No, it's usually three or four months. Three or four months in the area. Okay. Thank you. 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 We've had some luck with inducement through serotonin, but a lot of times they, she figures the eggs aren't really ready. Uh, they may actually get fertilized and start developing, but the larvae don't survive. And it may be due to the eggs not having enough yolk or something. I don't really know. So anyway, we have a few plants. We spawned them a couple of months before we left, and they were doing quite well. But amazingly enough, when we got back from home leave, they 90% of the ones that had been there when we left on home leave were dead. So, but uh, they're growing very slowly. They're much, much slower than any of the others we've had, any other for most of we've had in the pools here. Mm. Uh, you said there's a bit of a smile, remarkable, and you know, I mean, what, have you got some tools? Well, Let's put it this way, when the clams are young, you have to tighten the algae, and clean the algae off them mm -hmm. regularly. If it's not done, they'll die. So, uh, same bats, these are the same age as these uh, squamosa over here, and you see they're really uh, pretty good size. They're about six months old, and uh, the, the squamosa over in the southern pool have grown extremely slowly for some reason. Same water supply. Basically the same temperature. And they're also quite mobile. You know, we have one experiment where we have them, we were looking at the intake and outtake and outflow ends of the raceway, left and right, with individual clams. These have grown 
are fairly uh, fast. These are also six months. You'll see that when we go out in the field. We have other trays out there. They all have yellow shells. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you get the yellow and white shells mixed in latches in the same, in the same colors. Mm -hmm. mixed in. Yeah, this one here is uh, around two years old. It's not a particularly large individual, that batch. It was brought in here because it wasn't looking too good out in the field. But. So um, had the faster growing and the yellow. Had the yellow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's interesting because there's no significant difference in growth rate in relation to shell color with our data. No, well, I'll make a note of that and just check when I go back. But some of those we looked at out in the field. The raceway over there. So the remaining gigas in here are ones which survived the flocculation, flocculant algal bloom in here. And, but they're the same age and the same batch. And you can see they're substantially larger in size. One of the things that we would be doing when we uh, sort them for putting them out is, of course, measuring these and comparing with the ones that got transferred to that. They want to see whether they uh, will live, and they're going to be doing some biopsy. Yeah. I said it's also a black Yeah, that's a different species there. There's actually a six species in them. This is the lagoon behind Motopoye, mm. where the ocean nursery is located. We've just visited one site on the outer barrier reef where two trays had Tridacna squamosa, two and a half years old. In seaward from Motopore at the ocean nursery, Pat Collin, Joe Baker, diving on the trays. <laughs> 